Columns and rows are two of the most fundamental widgets you'll use when building apps. And that's because most apps are just widgets either stacked on top of one another, columns, or next to each other, rows. So like in the Airbnb app, you've got column and row or Amazon, column and row. You will use columns and rows in every single app you built and on most pages. So in this video, we're gonna do a deep dive into these widgets, learn how to use them, and how to fix the most common error you're gonna encounter when you use these. So the first and most important thing to understand about columns and rows is that they have two axes. So over here, you can see that we've got a main axis, and then we've got something called a cross axis. So for a column that I've dumped in here, our main axis is, of course, our vertical axis, up and down. And you can see this right here in our main axis alignment that we'll get to in a second, is that these are vertical things going on here. And if I were to add in a row, for instance, you can see that the main axis is now horizontal stuff. Because, of course, on a row, the axes are switched. And we're covering both columns and rows in this lesson because fundamentally they're the same thing, just opposite. Columns vertical and rows horizontal. Okay, so let's delete our row right here and take a look at some of these properties. So the first one we've got is our main axis size. And this property tells your column whether it should try to fill all of its space on its main axis. So here, vertical, and that's what we've got selected right here. Use the maximum amount of space you have or minimum. And this will be easier to see if we've got a widget in here. So let's just add in a container here, give it a different color so we can see it. And then if we click on our column again, we can see how this works. So right now we have maximum. So our column is going all the way to the bottom of our screen. And if we click it here, it shrinks down to whatever size the child is on that main axis. Now, when I dropped in that container, something else happened when we dropped in our container. That is, that the column shrunk in its width from being full width, width of this device here, down to the width of our container. So if we delete our container, we can see that we've got a full width column. And if we paste back in our container, it shrinks down to our container. Now, that's not actually what's happening. What's actually happening is our column is growing from zero width to 100, which is what our container is, because a column gets its width from its children. But if we were to dump a column in just like this and it had no width, then you couldn't select it or see it. So Flutterflow is helping you out here giving you some space to drop stuff in and select things. Okay, so let's put our container back in and look at some more of these properties. So that's our main axis size. Next, we have our main axis alignment, and this will tell your column where it should place the children inside the column. So right now, we've got start selected. So it places our container at the start of our column. And of course, you have center and end. And those are obvious. For our next one, space evenly, let's duplicate our container in here with command D and and select our column and select space evenly. And what this is doing is it's taking the extra space, so all of this white space right here, and it's distributing it evenly, both between the widgets and at the beginning and the end. Next, we have space around. And this is easiest to understand if we add in another container. So we're gonna duplicate this one more time. And if we cycle between these two, we can see the slight difference right here. And what space around is doing is it's taking all of that extra space. And first, it's dividing that to put equal space between your widgets and then taking the remaining space and putting it at the beginning and the end. And then finally, we've got our space between, which pushes our first and last widgets to the end and then divides the empty space between the interior widgets. Okay, so we've set our main axis size, so our vertical size, our main axis alignment, so how our children are aligned inside our column, and now we have our cross axis alignment. So on a column, our cross axis is horizontal. So this is how our widgets should be arranged horizontally inside our column. But we've got a problem because right now the width of our column is determined by its children and all our children are the same width. So if we were to do any of these, they don't 
do anything, and that might be what you want, and so that's fine. But in order to demonstrate this, let's make our column bigger. Let's make it fill the full horizontal space. So how do we do that? Well, first, we could put another widget inside here that fills the full width, because if our column wants to be the size of its children, and we make a children full width, then it'll make it full width. So we could take any one of these children and just give it an infinity width. So now our column fills the whole screen space. So that's one way, make a child bigger. The other way would be to have a parent pass down a constraint that's larger. So for instance, we could take this column right here and wrap it, command B, in a container and remove the height and remove the width and give it a double infinity width. And so now if we select our column, we can see that it's filling the screen. Now, there's one more way that you can do this, but it'll change the size of the children. And that's to use this cross axis alignment stretch property. And if I click this, it'll stretch the children to fill all of the available space. Okay, but let's set it back to how we were before. And now that we've got a column that's full height and full width, we can see that our other cross axis alignment properties do what we would expect them to do. Okay, great. We're almost done with our column. We've got one more property, and that's our scrollable property. By default, it's turned off, but if we turn it on, we're gonna see that two things happen. First, it will shrink wrap the children. Well, why does it do that? This is because our column has alignment options. And with those options, you're telling your column what to do with its extra space. But if you're allowing scrolling, that extra space has changed from just being the extra space on the screen to being potentially infinite because now you can scroll. And if Flutter allowed it, it would have that main error that we're gonna talk about at the end of the video, an unbounded height error, where one widget is looking to another widget for how big it should be, and that other widget is saying, give me the infinite amount. So it shrink wraps your widgets. The second thing that it does is it allows you to scroll. Now, it's not allowing us to scroll here because scrolling only occurs when you have some sort of height constraint. And that height constraint could come from the screen size itself, or it could come from a parent widget. So for instance, if we select our container up here and we give it a height of 200 pixels, then this will scroll. And it might be hard to see here, so let's change the color of this. And now we can see that we've got a scrollable column. The other way that you could do this, let's take this off of our height, is we can make these containers bigger so that they're going to overflow our device here. And once that happens, then we can scroll. Okay, so that's columns. But what about rows? Well, remember, they're basically the same thing, just opposite. So we can fly through this very fast because we already understand everything. So I'm going to just command Z till my containers are back to their 100 by 100. And then I'm just going to replace this widget with a row. And let's replace this container right here to demonstrate some of the properties. So first, we've got our main axis size. It's set to max, which is filling up the whole horizontal space. And now I set it to min, it's going to shrink down to its children, which is right here. Let's make that big again. And of course, these work like expected. And of course, our cross axis doesn't work because the same issue as before, our height is shrunk down to its children, and I could stretch them or do the same things as before. So let's just wrap it in a container and give it a height of say 500 pixels and spread out it. And now we're centered in the middle and we can do all of our cross axis alignment stuff. Okay, so the last thing we want to look at is the main error that's going to happen to you, and it will happen to you, but after this video, you're going to understand it and be able to fix it easily. So let's just delete everything we've got right now. So let me show you how this error pops up. So I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to add in a column, and I'm going to add in a list view here. And right now it's shrink wrapping. So shrinking things down to its children it doesn't have any, so it's zero. But if I turn this off, I'm going to get this error right here. It's saying the most recent action would have caused a crashing error, so we've undone it for you. And the reason is that this list view would have undefined or infinite height, but its parent gives it an unlimited amount of vertical space to expand, which would cause an error. We've undone it for you. Okay, so sometimes when this error happens, you'll see this little pop-up. Sometimes it won't. And let me show you that. 
we're going to add in a column here and add in a container in that column. Let's give it a little color here and we'll replicate this error by coming over to our height right here and clicking infinity. Now, if this happens to you, you can simply refresh. And why did that happen? The fundamental problem here is Flutter's inability to know the height. But what do I mean by that? Well, we've got a column here, and the nature of a column is that it stacks stuff on top of each other inside. That is, it's made to accept a lot of things inside it. And so it determines its height by looking to its children. And everything is fine if you have a couple of children saying, I'm 100 pixels or I'm 200 pixels. But if the child says, give me an infinite amount of height, the column doesn't know what to do, so it crashes. So how do you fix this? Well, the big principle is to be more explicit. That is, if the problem is not knowing the height, we need to be more explicit to our column about how big it should be. And there's a couple ways to do it. So in this design right here, it errored out because our container wanted infinite height. So anytime it has an explicit height, like right now with 100, it's fine. So if I gave it 500 pixels, it's going to be fine. Or if I gave it more than the height, it's still fine. So if I gave it 2,000 pixels, it's fine. But what if you wanted it to be the full height of the screen? screen. Not any more, not any less. Well, that's where these expansion properties come in and just use the expanded widget. And we'll have another video on the difference between flexible and expanded. But the job of expanded is to fill the rest of the space in a column or a row. And that's being more specific to our column. Because instead of saying, give me infinite space, these are saying, just give me whatever space you've got left. Okay, so that's one way. You could also be more explicit by giving it a percentage here. So I'm gonna give it a height of 100%, and that's fine because we're being more explicit. Hey, this is John from Slightly in the Future. So as I was finishing up this last video, our amazing devs dropped another property in the column. So let me show this to you. So we've got a column right here, and at the bottom right here, we now have this item spacing property. And what this does is it adds gaps, it adds spaces between the children in your column. So down here, if I want 12 pixels of spacing, boom, there we've got it, and it propagates between every child. This is awesome because before, if you wanted spacing, you would have to go into each item and add padding to it. And this way, this reduces the amount of repetitive work you have to do because you can just set it once and be done with it. So that adds the space in between each of the children items here. But if you wanted to also add to the beginning and the end of your column, you have this toggle button right here, apply to start and end. So apply this spacing to the start and the end of your column. So when you turn that on, boom, now we've got nice spacing at the top and the bottom, and we haven't had to mess with padding at all. The last aspect of this item spacing is this set from variable icon. So this means you can have dynamic spacing. So maybe you wanna alternate spacing between having big and small gaps. Maybe you wanna have a big gap after your first item because you wanna highlight it. Those are the types of things you can do with setting this item spacing from a variable. And that's columns in rows in Flutterflow.